uh, D2D or device-to-device -device communication often refers to the technology that allows user equipment to communicate with each other with or without the, the involvement on network infrastructure such as an access point or in ODD. D2D is promising as it is used to make ultra low latency communication possible, whether D2D communications are developed with or without the network infrastructure in mind. It allows more devices to be connected with full set data rates and reduce latency. D2D may be one of the essential technologies to support 5G wireless network challenges in many industries. This can be used in con concepts such as ambient awareness and proximity discovery, in which applications search their local environment for people, information, products, or services that are relevant to their users. For example, a team golfer could be altered to a special offer at a, at a local golf shop as she passes nearby. The cellular networks may become out of reach in natural disasters, terrorist attacks, and so on. In this scenario, the proposed protocol can override the network key agreement mode and use pre shared keys. There are several security challenges for D2D communication, including authentication, authorization, confidentiality, integrity, and a secure and so on. And a secure protocol has to address all of them. The list of security solutions proposed by the recent references in the, is in the table. None of the protocols have all the security properties. Our proposed protocols use Ariadne with Tesla and LTA key distribution system. It designed for all four communication scenarios, including D2D direct, direct and indirect, with and without cellular uh, coverage. It has also been transmitted a message in the network opportunistically by adding the encrypted message to the routing packet, which is for the mobile nature of D2D devices. When users are mobile in D2D communication, they may change their location after its routing process and no longer participate in sending and receiving messages. Therefore, the routing procedure needs to be done again. But in our proposed protocol, by adding the encrypted message field to the routing package, users how to participate in D2D as long as sending and receiving one packet process time. In this protocol, two D2D devices are in each other's vicinity and source initiates a D2D communication by requesting the core network to establish a D2D communication. First, the source which wants to establish a D2D communication to a specified receiver sends a D2D request message including source and the destination identity in a secure cellular channel to the MLE or, to, or core network. MLE checks the validity of the message and authenticates the source and the destination and also checks if the destination is in the proximity of the source or not. If all the situations above meet, MME builds a D2D session key and sends it to the source in the secure cellular channel. The source builds, then the source builds a K prime key based on the key K received from the MME with a self created none. Then encrypt the message M with the key K, with the key K prime. For integrity properties, the source builds a message, authentication key with the key K from the message field, including the D2D request, source ID, destination ID, non package ID, and time. Then the source broadcasts all the data was in the input of the MAC function with the, re with the result of it and uh, H0 to the receiver. 
Destination after receiving the message first check the package ID. It should not be repetitive. Then check the value of time. It should not be a value so far in the past. If all the situations agree, send a D2D request including destination identity and source identity to the MME. MME authorized the destination and source based on information is in the, its InnoDB. And if there was uh, an earlier D2D request to destination from the specified transmitter, MME accepts the request and sends the TK to the destination in the secure cellular channel in the step of seven. Destination after receiving the TK from MME and start to decrypt the match function with the TK. If all the values are equal to the values was in the request, the validity of the message is accepted by the destination and then starts to decrypt the package by evaluation of the TK prime with the TK received from MME and nonce in the requested in the request field. After successful decryption and evaluation of the package, the destination gives a message reply and sends it to the transmitter. For integrity properties, put, put the value of D2D reply, destination identity, and source identity in a MAC. Uh, the this protocol starts like DD2D, the previous protocol, but um, uh, it has it has the uh, it has some relaying root nodes. Um, steps one, two, three, and four of the protocol are the same as direct D2D protocol. Uh, we would discuss the remaining steps. Device A. After receiving the package from the transmitter, checks the ID for non-distribution property and then checks the key value. This value should not be too far in the, in the time. If all the value was true, it accepts the package and then evaluates the H1 value based on H0 and its identity. Then for integrity properties, calculate the MAC function on all the values on the previously received received message plus its identity and H1 with the key K18, which is the key to its Tesla key chain. Then forward, then forward all these values plus MA Who do we we, we we lost you? I think we've lost your uh, your, your voice. Could you repeat? What the package? Uh, which part should I uh, repeat again? Uh, just a few okay. seconds ago, yeah. Just uh, just this slide, just this slide, because we lost your your voice for a while. Sorry, sorry. I will repeat it again. Thank you. Uh, after a device, uh, well, uh, a device C also repeats all the process about the received message and make MAC function based on KBT, which is the key to its Tesla key chain, and forward the package. Device C repeats all process above and use the key KCT for evaluation of MC, then forward the package in step 10. Steps 11 and 12 are the same as the steps 6 and 7 in DD2D, which described in the last section. Uh, after device, uh, uh, after destination, Getting the key K from MME starts to evaluate the hash function chain, including the MAC function with the key K just received. If the final chain is equal to the one in the request, the validity of the message accepted by the receiver then starts to decrypt the package. First, evaluate the key K prime with the key K and none in the request field. Second, decrypt the package. After successful decryption and 
evaluation the package the destination gives a message this way and send it to the client speaker for integrity properties put the value of this would be written like destination identity source identity into a MAC function and encrypt it with the TK and send it towards the, the transmitter. Device C after sorry device C after receive a reply package adds its test log key to the end of the package and forwards it. In a step 16 and 17, B and A do the same process process as C. Uh, and forward the package to the transmitter. Uh, this protocol is very similar to the D2D, DD2D protocol, but in this protocol, steps one, two, six, and seven do not exist because of lacking cellular infrastructure. To preserve confidentiality property, both source and destination have to use a key that set before starting this form of communication. We suppose each device already exchanged secure keys in a way such as key agreement procedure. The protocol description is as follows. Source starts to decrypt the message, to encrypt the message with the mutual key K and then for integrity property put the request D2D to field encrypted file C, nonce, source ID, destination ID, package ID, and key to the MAC function with its own Tesla key. Since the MAC function input with the result of MAC function H0, I mean H0, towards the destination. The destination could not validate the H0 value before receiving the Tesla key of the source, but it can decrypt the message if it has the mutual key. After validation of the package, destination builds the reply package with the values of D2D reply, destination ID, source ID, and T, and the MAC value of this field with the KDT key, which is destination Tesla key. Sends the MAC field input with the MAC itself towards the source. Uh, in this protocol, uh, we don't have a cellular coverage, and uh, the destination and the source are not in each other's vicinity. So some relays, some relays should participate in this form of uh, communication. It, this protocol is a combination of RD2D and DD2DW. The source and the destination are not in each other's vicinity, as I said. The source, first source starts D2D communication and encrypts the message with the key K, then for integrity property, puts the request D2D encrypted file C, nonce, source ID, destination ID, package ID, and T fields to the MAC function with its own Tesla key. Then sends the MAC function input with the results of uh, H0 towards the destination. Device A, after receiving the package checks the ID for non-repudiation property and then checks the key values. This value should not be too far in the past. If all the values were true, it accepts the package and then evaluates the H1 based on H0 and its identity. Then for integrity property, calculates the MAC function on all the values on the previously received packet plus its identity and H1 with the key KAT, which is the key of its Tesla key chain. Then forward all these values plus MA towards the destination. Device C also repeats all the processes above to the received packet and makes MAC function based on KDT, the key from its Tesla key chain and creates MB. Then forward the package uh, towards the destination. Device C repeats all the process as I described and uh, forward the package as well. The destination uh, could not validate the H0 value before receiving the Tesla key of, of all uh, relaying uh, nodes, but it can decrypt the message if it has the mutual key. If the Tesla keys arrive and the package fails to validate, then the destination withdraws the package and informs all the nest calls from the intruder. After validation of the package, 
destination builds, builds the, diff, uh, the reply package with the values of D2D reply, destination ID, source ID, and T, and the max value made of these fields to the key KDT, which is destination Tesla key, sends the max input with the max step towards the source into the network. Device C, after receive a reply package, adds its Tesla key to the end of the package and forwards it. In a step 12 and 13, B and A do the same procedure as the C and forward the package to the source. The amount of uh, operation based on the rule and the packet size of each node is in the table. In this table, ENC is for encryption, DC is for decryption, H is for hash value, KS is for key size, and N is for the number of nodes, including source and destination. We assume symmetric encryption with the output of 256 bits and also a hash function with the size of 256 bits for bit for request. CI, IN, and 8 bits for source and destination identity. Based on the number of nodes participating in D2D, the replay packet will have a different size. If we assume the maximum number of nodes is 20, the maximum packet size of destination in the replay packet is 602 uh, and 29 bytes, and also the maximum packet size of intermediate nodes in request and replay packet respectively are 662 bytes and 629 KS bytes. Let us look at the computation overhead of the proposed protocol compared, compared to the other references. In the proposed protocol, uh, protocols, we use a symmetric function for encryption and decryption of the message and one for key and also a cryptographic hash function for each transmission. So there are two symmetric encryptions uh, or decryptions and one cryptographic hash function evaluation for source and destination and one cryptographic hash function evaluation for each relaying device. The computation cost of the proposed protocol compared to other protocols is in the table. As you can see, our proposed protocol has a low computation overhead compared to other references. Uh, here is the evaluation of communication overhead of the proposed protocol. T prime is the number of time slots that D2D requests happen. T is the total number of time slots. N is the number of D2D requests at each time slot. And N is the number of devices. We compare the communication cost of RD2D with SODE. Because RD2D has the biggest communication overhead among the other three proposed protocols. In RD2D and RD2DW, the protocol has two end packet transmissions for each relay device, one for request and one for reply. So the communication overhead of the proposed protocol is as the equation below. I would like you to focus on these two graphs in communication overhead of RD2D and SODE based on increasing the number of time slots when the number of inodds are two and then are seven in figures left and right. It can be seen that the communication overhead increases as the number of nodes or n increase. When the number of inodds increase from two to seven, the communication overhead of SODE increases for about three times, but in RD2D, the number of inodds has no effect on the communication overhead. In another com comparison, we check the change of the number of T prime to communication overhead when N equals to one and N equals to five in figures left and right respectively. The communication overhead increases as T prime increases and when N increases to five, both protocols have more communication overhead. It means as the number of D2D requests increase, in the communication overhead increases as well. In both pictures, RD2D has less communication overhead than SOD, 
and the slope of SOD is much more than R D2D. In this part, we show the security properties of our protocols. Our proposed protocols have authentication and authorization, means this property is based on uh, this property is based on the cellular authentication and authorization process in cellular coverage scenarios. Uh, I mean DD2D and RD2D protocols. In two other scenarios, DD2DW and RD2DW authentication and authorization are based on the privacy of secret keys on each side. If both sides, I mean the source and destination, could decrypt the packet and evaluate the message. It means both sides are authorized sites. For this assumption, we suppose that no one reveals the key and the key state in both devices securely. Our proposed protocols have confidentiality as well. This property is gained by the encryption and decryption of the message based on the secret key received from the MME. MME is the trusted server which would not reveal the key K to anybody but authorized source and destination on each D2D communication. In DD2DW and RD2DW, the confidentiality of the message is based on the secrecy of the keys and key distribution system they use in the absence of cellular infrastructure. This property is caught by the hash values. If the destination evaluates the hash chain values and they are different from what was inside the packet, it means the integrity of the packet lost and it should ignore the package, uh, the received packet. This property could be checked by the source to the field MD in replay packet does this part. This property can be set by the packet ID value in the request message, which should be fresh. Also, key value should not be too far in the past. Also, our protocol has uh, our protocols have source routing transmission. This property is only for RD2D and RD2DW because these two protocols have a routing part. Because our purpose, proposed protocols are based on our Yadne protocol, it prevents tampering with the attackers or compromise nodes and also resists to many denial of service attacks. ProVerif is a formal tool for verifying cryptographic protocols. Input language of ProVerif supports channel with dollar view ability attacker. This attacker model is very strong and has, full, and has full control over the channel. We use ProVerif for verifying confidentiality, reachability, and security agreement of RD2D because it comprises three other protocols. Security properties that we use for this purpose come in the table. In this table, one main authentication uh, means uh, when one side of communication checks authenticity, i.e. in our protocols, source authenticates relaying devices and destination, but in one-to-one -one authentication, two sides of communication should authenticate each other, i.e. source and destination should authenticate each other. So we use one-to-one -one authentication for source and destination and one-way authentication for relaying devices. We assume MME is part of the core network and is trusted section, so we do not authenticate them in here. We check the security agreement procedure in two phases, running key and key agreement. In the phase of running key, a device uses a key, and in the phase of key agreement, the other device agrees on the key used. ProVerif can generate three kind, of, three kind of output. Result is true, result is false, and result cannot be, cannot be proven. As you can see, our, uh, the output of our uh, prot proposed protocol uh, is, uh, uh, the result is false, means the attacker could not evaluate uh, the key and uh, the uh, and the uh, evaluation uh, evaluation is true. Uh, ProVerif verifies all the security properties are RD2D. Figure, this figure shows protocol verification in ProVerif. Uh, 
and not uh, I can I I have to say result not even destination the table is false means means the attacker could not uh, get uh, could not uh, evaluate the key uh, from destination. We propose four D two D secure protocols uh, for four different scenarios: D D two D, R D two D. D2DW and RD2DW. This is the first time a protocol has the capability to adapt to four scenarios which are essential to D2D network. These protocols are based on ARIA with Tesla. We use LTA aka protocol for authentication and key agreement for the source and destination in RD2D and D2D. Also, we use Tesla broadcast authentication protocol for key utilization in intermediate nodes. This protocol does not need to be shared keys for these nodes. I mean for uh, intermediate nodes. Based on the results, our proposed protocol have less com computation overhead uh, among recent work and also uh, communication overhead. And also, it uh, meets all the security properties that we mentioned. Thank you so much for listening to the presentation.